Weather. We are joining back together again tonight. And um, I don't know about everybody that's watching, but around, of course, in our area here in Mobile, it's been a very wet uh, day or two and looks to be a very wet uh, rest of the week. So um, certainly we, um, we know that those things are coming. I want you to be safe uh, out there. But we wanted to get back together tonight to continue our study, Revelation chapter 13. We uh, finished up Revelation chapter 13, the first 10 chapter, the 10 verses, excuse me, um, the last time that we got together. And we're going to pick up the second half of Revelation 13 this week. Now, there is, um, this is a very... well-known uh, part of the passage. Uh, this is a, a part of the, the passage in Revelation that um, where this number 666 comes out. And um, so there's been so many different things that come out about that. And we'll talk some about it. We won't get too in-depth because I don't want you to get too hung up on that. But there is some things there that we will talk about. Um, anyway, um, we want to just briefly for a moment, because it has been a couple of weeks, we want to kind of go back into the first part of Revelation chapter 13. And uh, in that part, the beast of the sea uh, is seen. The beast of the sea comes out and, and um, um, they, they begin to uh, worship uh, this beast. Um, the beast showed many... Uh, things that were um, uh, very reminiscent of the book of Daniel. And there were many things that were listed there that went right along with what uh, Daniel said. And um, the, uh, the beast of the sea came and um, was given authority, uh, was given authority to continue all that he was doing for 42 months and uh, to make war with the saints, all of those things were going on. And so when we finished up um, last week, the, uh, the last part of that was saying, um, if anyone has an ear, let him hear. And if anyone is led into captivity, he shall go into captivity. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And then when we pick up this week, we're going to pick up on another beast. Now, remember, this is all together. We're talking now. There's there's three things. Um, <coughs> there was a dragon. Um, then there was a beast of the sea. And now there's going to be um, another beast. And so the three of those together make what many people consider to be the um, the completion of the um, the false trinity, if you will, uh, the completion that uh, this uh, false antichrist uh, that it will um, make the completion because it mirrors what we know as the trinity, the trinity, and so um, you know there are a lot of things, and and to understand why so many people would be fooled uh, in the when this comes to pass uh, can possibly be more understood when as we study the second part of chapter 13 in Revelation. So we're going to kind of break it down. We're going to talk about several things and and then um, we will um, continue on in our our study. So, <clears throat> if you will follow along with me, Revelation 13, we're going to pick up in verse 11, and we're going to go ahead and read the rest of the chapter, and then we'll go back and break it down. And 13 verse 11 says, Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and spoke like a dragon. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence, and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. He performs great signs, so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. 
and he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. Now, again, as we go back through this, there's so many things here uh, that, that we need to spend some time looking at. This overview study that we're, <clears throat> that we're doing, we're, we're not going to get super deep into everything, but I do want us to uh, at least break down some of what we're talking about here tonight. So one of the things that I, I want you to understand uh, as we look at this is I want us to think about in this passage the um, the appearance of this beast, this beast that came and he had two horns. Now, I want us to remember that the true lamb was described in Revelations 5 um, and, and verse 6, and it says uh, that the lamb has seven horns, but this counterfeit lamb, uh, so to speak, that is, is shown in Revelation 13, only has two horns, which many people will look at that as an indication of limited power and authority, limited. So we already know that the dragon was cast down for a little while. He was going to have power. That power was given to him by God. God allowed him to have the authority over the earth to have the power that he had during this limited time. It is a limited time. It is not unlimited. It doesn't go on forever. It is a limited time. During this limited time, the beast went after the, the, the woman who gave birth to the, uh, the Messiah, uh, but the beast could not get to the woman, so the beast has made war with all of the offspring, meaning the children of God. All of those who are believers, the beast is making war and trying to destroy all of God's people. However, uh, God's people have been sealed. So those who know him, those who have given their life to him, those who have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, those are sealed people. And so the, the beast cannot absolutely destroy God's people because even if we are killed, then we live. Even if we die, we still live. That to die is gain, right? And so we will continue to live. So the beast really doesn't have that authority, the dragon nor either of the beasts really have that authority over God's people. We see this picture of a beast coming up out of the earth this time, and the beast that comes up out of the earth, it says that he had two horns like a lamb, but you see it says he spoke like a dragon. So the, the, the picture that we see here is he's supposed to look like a lamb look like the messiah right he's supposed to be someone who in appearance seems to be the messiah but if you're listening and paying attention and hear what he's saying he's speaking like the dragon and we know the dragon is a symbol for satan so again this is a counterfeit messiah this is a counterfeit christ that we're talking about the beast that comes up and so this beast that comes up is beast of the earth with limited power again it made us to think of christ but yet is in fact from satan so um that's a very real thing for us to be aware of as we continue in this walk in this world now in this in this um revelation 13 it talks about those who live on the earth and 
Um, this refers to the people who are rebellious to God and who refuse to worship him. Okay, so it says, <clears throat> um, where it talks about those who live on the earth um, in this part. <clears throat> I'm trying to... Um, All of these that it's talking about are those who are um, who have refused to accept Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and that's in verse 14 where it says, And he who deceives those who dwell on the earth, that's those who dwell on the earth, are those who have refused to give their life to Christ. Those are the ones who are rebellious to God and refuse to worship him. Um, this particular phrase, uh, those who live on the earth, is also repeated again. Um, it's here in verse uh, 14. Uh, and so we see that it specifically says, says that. That's what it's talking about. So for a brief period of time, for a brief period of time, Satan is going to get the worship that he's always wanted. That's what he's always wanted. Satan has always wanted to receive the worship. He's always wanted to be the object of worship. He's always wanted to be the one that everybody worships. For a very short period of time, a very brief period of time, God has given him the authority. He has allowed him to reign here on the earth. And for a brief period of time, he will receive the worship that he's always wanted. Now, isn't that amazing? Now, think about this. Um, this beast that came out of the earth was doing great signs, but the great signs the beast came out of the earth was doing was to point back to the first beast. And so we, we noticed that, um, you know, the Holy Spirit's job is to point people to uh, the Father, right? Uh, Jesus, in everything that he did, he was pointing people back to the Father. And so again, we have this a semblance of a trinity that's pointing back to the other as the point of worship, the one that's to be worshipped. And so um, as we, we look at all of these things uh, and we see these things that happen, they're basically designed as a, a counterfeit God, right? So in verse, <clears throat> verse 12, it says, he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast. He performs great signs so that even fire comes down from heaven and he deceives those who dwell on the earth by signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast. He was granted to do these signs. In other words, he has no power, no authority of his own. He's been granted the power and the authority to be able to, to do this, to make these signs, to do these things, to point towards that. Now, the only authority, we know that the dragon only had the authority because God gave it to him. And so the dragon then gives the authority to the beast of the, the uh, sea and the beast of the earth. And the authority that he gave was only because of the authority he was given by God. So it's limited. None of them have their own authority, not any of these uh, that we see have their own authority. They have the authority only that God has given. And he was he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. So he's telling them to make an image, make a statue, make something that uh, people will worship. Well, if we think back to Daniel's day and the uh, the king in Daniel's day had the statue that was, you know, uh, this enormous statue and told the entire people of all the land that any time uh, that certain times they would hear music, they would hear things, and they were to turn and find this statue and fall down and worship it. They were all to worship the statue. They were That was what they were told they had to worship even during that time. So Daniel, in what he's seeing, um, easily understands that. And then John, in what he's being uh, shown, he can certainly understand from already having um, the writings of Daniel and understanding those things. So John is, is telling us here, this, this second beast, the second beast, the beast of the earth, is telling all of the people of the world that they need to create an image. Now, there are some who say it's not a statue. 
There are some who say that the image that's going to be created is the image on money. It's the image going to be on money. They need to create an image and they're going to worship this image. And so they're saying that they're going to create it on money. There are others who say, no, it's going to be a statue. It's going to be a great statue like we saw in the book of Daniel, that that, that people are going to lay uh, down and worship every time um, that they're called to. Uh, we're going to see these things. Well, we don't really know. It doesn't tell us. It just says that, that they were to make an image of the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. So they're supposed to make this image somehow, whether it be uh, on, on money, whether it needs to be on a statue, however it is, um, this image is supposed to be made. And so the image that's supposed to be made, the, um, the amazing thing about it is this. Um, the, the image is made, the, the beast has, is telling the people to make this image. And then uh, it says in 15, he was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. So think about this now. This beast is giving the, the direction that all those who dwell on the earth are to make an image to the first beast to be worshipped. They're to put all of their resources together. They're to make this image, whether that be on money, whether it be on a statue, however it is, they're supposed to make this image of this beast and they're to worship this image. And then on top of that, the second beast then is able to give the authority to the image of the first beast, the ability to speak and to breathe. And so it says to breathe uh, to the image of the beast, that the image should both speak and cause as many who would not worship the image to be killed. So the image is speaking, not just the beast, but the image of the beast is speaking. So now <clears throat> think about this. Do you ever, you ever seen a magic show, and and the the magician comes out and he does something incredible, and and you you know in your mind it can't be. There's no way that he could make that card disappear. It just can't disappear. There's something behind that, but yet you're invited to walk into the parking spot where the car was. You you saw everything that happened. You've looked everywhere. You, you know, how did the car just disappear? Well, there's always a trick. There's always something there. It doesn't really happen in that. Christians are able to do that very thing because it's so convincing. It's extremely convincing. Well, here, the beast the start with the dragon and then the beast of the sea and the beast of the earth are all very convincing. They're causing the beast of the earth is causing fire to come down from heaven. He's causing statues or likenesses of the first beast to be able to speak and to destroy those who won't worship. There are things that there that are happening. And of course, as we look at all of these things, all of these things that are happening, it's it it's easy for people to be taken in by that. Because they see these things. Now, remember, again, we're talking about people who have refused to follow God. But Well, what Satan wants for you to worship him. Um, <clears throat> when we see this this whole passage and we look at all of this, we come to an understanding that this is all directed so that it may fulfill Satan's desire to be worshipped. Every bit of it is. So if all of that is the case, then this power that the beast was given to breathe life, so to speak, into the image of the beast 
Uh, it was done so that the beast would speak, and then whoever refused to worship this image of the beast would be killed. Um, this this permission, this divine permission that we're talking about, um, is granted to the beast, but it's granted to the beast not by his own power, but by the power that the dragon was given by God in the first place. So that's the incredible thing is that it was given to him in the very beginning. Um, this power is not a power that he has on his own. It's a power that was given him by God. The dragon was given the power and the dragon then gave the power to the beast. Um, so as we continue on looking at all of this in this passage, um, I want us to move a little bit farther um, and understand that um, this, this um, what we're talking about in all of these verses in Revelation 13, this is that abomination of desolation <clears throat> that Daniel was talking about in, in, in the book of Daniel. This is what it's talking about in Daniel. It also talked about it in Matthew uh, chapter 24 as well. And so now I want to move forward <clears throat> to um, verse 16. Verse 16 tells us this. It says, He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Now, a few things here that I want us to see. Why does the mark need to be put on the forehead or the right hand? Why Why is that? Why can't there just be a mark on the left hand? Why can't there be a mark on the forearm or, uh, you know, a mark somewhere else? Why can't there be a mark somewhere else? Why is it that this mark was supposed to be on the forehead or on the right hand? Now, here's some things that's interesting that I want you to understand. In the Jewish culture in the Jewish view, the forehead was the seat of all consciousness and thought, and it revealed a person's relationship with God. So if you're Satan and you're trying to be the new God, you're trying to be the one that is better than the old version, you're the one taking over here. What do you want to do? Where do you want to have these things done? You want to make sure that what you do is very direct and purposeful, that there's not just some willy-nilly thing. This was a purposeful direction that went completely against the Jewish thought that the, the forehead was the seat of all consciousness and thought and that it revealed a person's relationship with God. So forehead, that's what I want to do. Or maybe the right hand. Well, why the right hand? On the right hand means that you would be controlled by the beast. So... With the beast right you've taken god completely out of all of that and replace god with the beast replace god with um this whole worship that is not god this is the new god this is the one that is wanting to take over now granted he knows he only has a limited amount of time so in that limited amount of time he wants to take everything he can get right everything he can get and so the mark has to be given now, the requirement for the mark, it says it's made so that no one was able to buy or sell anything. Well, um, as we, we look at this, it says no one will be able to buy or sell anything without this mark. Why is that important? I mean, why, why would that be important to put that stipulation that no one may buy or sell without the mark? Well, think about this. 
you need food, you need water, you need clothing, you need all of the items that you need. How do you get them? You buy them. Well, wait a minute. I'm 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 a farmer. I, I produce, you know, I raise all my my own uh, vegetables and and um, all of those things, and I have cattle, and I have so I have all of that. I don't have to buy it, okay? But you got to buy seed to, to plant the stuff. You got to buy um, feed for the cattle. You got to take care of them. All the different things that you have to do. So somewhere in all that process, something's going to have to be bought. And now, how do you get other things you need? Say you are a farmer and you are raising all your food. You still got to have clothes. How do you get the clothes? You sell the produce in order to get the money to purchase the clothes. Well, if you don't have that mark, you can't do that. So if you don't have a mark, you can't buy, you can't sell, it shuts you down. Because very soon, whatever you have is going to be used up. You're going to need to purchase something. Well, how are you going to get money to purchase it? You're going to need to, to sell something in order to buy something. There's There's got to be a trade there somewhere. And without that mark, you can't do that. So the goal of the beast in all of this is to make it so no one can refuse this mark. So no one can absolutely get away without taking this mark. What if there are those who... Uh, don't want to take the mark. They they just don't believe. Maybe they still are are, are struggling uh, in there uh, trying to understand God. They don't want to take the mark. Well, without taking the mark, they can't buy or sell. So this forces those who are still dwelling on the earth to have to receive that mark. Else, how are they going to live? How are they going to do that? Now, I want to make sure you understand a very vivid difference between a mark and a seal, okay? Earlier we talked about it, that God's people have been sealed. We talked about they have been sealed up and that those who have the seal of God cannot be hurt. Those who have the seal of God cannot be destroyed. Those who are sealed by God are those who will never be destroyed by Satan. They can't. Now, that doesn't mean they, that they can't be killed, but it means that they will never be taken or destroyed by Satan. Um, but the difference in a seal and a mark is that Satan cannot put a seal on anyone. He can require a mark, and that mark can be put on there, but they're not sealed like those from God. You know, it, think about it like this. What if there was a king, and the king, you know, they had their seal that they put on everything, right? That's the king's seal. Well, then somebody came along and decided, well, I'm going to make my own seal. I'm going to make a seal and, and I'm going to put it on something. Well, they could put that mark on something, but it would not carry any authority. It would not carry any weight. It would not be uh, given uh, any um, attention by others that knew that mark was not as great as the seal. It was just a mark. And it was a, a, an attempt to be like the king, to be like that one, but it was just a mark. It was not even a seal. So, um, you know, th those are the things that we, we have to think about. There, there are those who um, have ideas about this mark. Um, there are those who think it could be an invisible mark, but the, I, I don't think so. Um, I think it's a, definitely a visible mark because Satan would want everyone to see and know that that person is marked uh, by them. Um, there are some who say it could be a, a Greek letter. Um, that's marked on there based off a Roman official. Remember, we talked about there are some who believe that this this new kingdom that's going to rise up, that's going to be the uh, the dragon, the head of that kingdom, not the dragon, but the beast, the head of that is going to be the, the new Roman Empire uh, that's going to rise up. So, you know, perhaps that could be. Um, but we don't know. We really don't know what that is. Now, the the reality is that in all of that, that that we see there, um, that uh, mark that's placed on there, it says it has to be either, um, it says it has to be either um, the mark or the name or the number of the name. The mark, the name, or the number of the name. So there's possible options of what that will look like. And then it goes on to say in verse um 18 here is wisdom let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast for it is the number of a man his number is six 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 
It's a very well-known number. Um, it is probably the most well-known number uh, among believers and unbelievers. People have heard of that. Um, <clears throat> so there have been all kinds of formulas that people have come up with and said it, it when you look at the number of a man you take his name and you figure out the letters of the alphabet and you do this and you do that and it comes up to be the number 666 which is name that they came up with is the antichrist because this formula that they have applied is the number and it says listen calculate the number this is here is wisdom let him who has understanding calculate the number. This is written by John in a way that would make you think that the people, his audience that was reading it on that day, would understand exactly what he meant and be able to calculate. There are those who believe that the calculation comes up and that the name that of the person, when you go through all the calculation, is actually um, Nero. Right? They believe that this is actually Nero, that um, the Caesar Nero, that this number comes up to be. And so they, they believe that Nero, the emperor of Rome, was in fact this, and that this has already transpired, that this has already happened, what John is talking about. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not of that camp. I don't believe that it has already transpired. I believe that it is to come. There are those who believe that it is going to be a new Rome empire. That's going to be the empire that rises up with this beast of the sea. That's going to be the new empire, the new Rome. Rome is going to, to take over the world again. And as Rome takes over the world again, the emperor that takes over at that time may then take on the name Nero, which then may be the 666. Again, those are things people have speculated. Those are things that people are trying to uh, figure out is there any absolute hard evidence that says this is who it is no because it even talks about the mark of the beast the name of the beast or the number of the beast and so in all of this that it's talking about we don't have a clear picture of what the beast is going to be we know that um what we read on all of this that the beast is going to be a appear to be it appears that the beast is going to be a human okay it's going to be not a beast but instead it's going to be a human it's going to be someone it's going to be a person and that person somehow has uh, that connection that they can be uh, made with that number and therefore they're the one who is in fact the beast they are the antichrist they are the one who is uh, coming that we've been told about um, this um, 666 has been very popularized with with the Emperor Nero like I said um, and and we look at all of this we we see that um, but then there are others who believe that Nero's name when calculated becomes 616 and so um that was one translation and another translation said 616 so which is it is is it is it 666 or not we it's it's unknown um so there are some weaknesses in that in order to uh to get the 666 to fit with nero you have to make it emperor nero well emperor is not his name <laughs> His name is Nero. Emperor is not his name. That would be like using my name, Pastor George. Well, Pastor is not my name. Pastor is what I am. I'm, I'm, that's a title. Um, emperor is a title of what Nero was, but it's not his name. So you can't use that to calculate. So if you truly did that and, and you had to use that, then why would there be a title that would be on there that would make it come up to that? Um, I just don't think that, that it would be. Um, and so um, when we look at all of the different things, if the if the number in the Greek, if it all worked out to be 666 in the Greek, but then when you translate it to Hebrew, it doesn't turn out that way, 
then why would you consider that? Because again, this is um, the Hebrew is God's chosen people, right? The Israelites. And so certainly they would want that number, that mark to be known to them as in, hey, I'm the one taking over now. And, and it doesn't work out that way. So um, there's just all kinds of things um, that when we look through all of this, that uh, these numbers and the way they add them up, I, I was reading a, a time before on, on someone had uh, worked up all the numbers and said that um, Ronald's, R Ronald Reagan's name came out to be that. that we've been told would transpire. So um, certainly it can't be that. So when we look at all of these things and we understand what is here, what the most important thing to know about all of this is we need to understand the Bible. We need to understand our scriptures. We need to read. We need to, to pray. We need to spend that time. We need to know about these things. Now listen, the most important thing is to understand that we need to share with people now so that they can come to know the Lord now so that they won't be fooled by this this fake trinity. They won't be fooled by this um, this fake God. They won't be fooled by all of that and be uh, drawn into it. That instead, they would come to know the Lord already. They would not be the ones that would be drawn into this. Um, all of the things that we see here are things that... Uh, you can look at them and be totally terrified. Or you can look at all of it and understand that if you know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, there's no reason to be terrified. The thing that you should be terrified about is for those of your friends and family and acquaintances that don't know Jesus, that you need to try to reach them for Christ. I can remember as a child and and, and the 666 thing um, people, you know, all kinds of things. Um, they, uh, uh, you know, I, I would, uh, you would look at a, a odometer on a on an automobile, and when it got to six, 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 it was like, hurry up and get to the next mile. We don't want that to stay on there. You can't stop now. You got to drive another mile. You don't want that number to stay there. You know, you didn't want that number. Now, the other thing to know about that number six, 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 the number six uh, is they added the three on there, uh, make it six, six, six. And, but the number six means it's not perfect because the perfect number is seven, right? The, the number seven is symbolic of God. And so the perfect number is seven. So if the number for this mark of this beast is six, it's less than perfect. And so therefore it is not the original. Um, anyway, I um I hope and, and pray that you don't get so wrapped up in the number that you don't stop and understand that this whole thing is so that to turn people um away to follow this false god. Um this this whole book of Revelation is one that is very um difficult to study, but at the same time it's very um it needs to be studied, and we need to, to study that so that we might be able to share with others what they need to know. Um, listen, I, I am looking forward to the next couple of weeks. I'm looking forward to celebrating Palm Sunday. I'm looking forward to celebrating our Resurrection Day. And as I'm looking forward to all of those, it's because I know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And I know that I don't have to worry about these things because I know who I belong to. And I know that I am sealed with the, the seal of Christ for all eternity. So I'm looking forward to that. I hope that you can say that. And if not, if you can't say that, then I want to encourage you. Reach out to me and let me talk to you about that. I want to share with you some things. This Sunday is our Palm Sunday. We will be meeting at 1045 as we normally do. And um, we're going to have some exciting times as we worship this weekend. But I also want to encourage you to um, look forward to Resurrection Sunday. We're going to be having a Resurrection um, Day service uh, at 1045. But we're also going to be having a um, sunrise service uh, that morning 
uh, early morning before sunrise. So I, I'm not sure yet exactly we'll be putting out on Sunday what time. Um, I've got to look up and see what time sunrise is on that day. But we'll be putting out Sunday what time the following Sunday sunrise service is going to be. But we're going to meet out in the in the uh, on the outdoors in our property. The, the three crosses that are in the right in the curve. If you've ever been to our church, that you know it. If you've ever driven by our church, I'm sure you probably know it. That's where we'll meet and we'll have a sunrise service and we'll celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior on that morning. And then um, that Sunday service at 10:45, we're going to have a wonderful time celebrating in the Lord. We'll have some special music along with a a word from the Lord, and uh, we'll just be there to to celebrate the resurrection of our Savior, knowing that because of the resurrection, he's overcome anything that the devil tries to throw at us. He's overcome it all. So I'm excited about that. Also, I want to I'll share with you, if you um, have been joining us on Wednesday night, that starting on the Sunday after Easter, I believe it's April 11th, on that Sunday morning, we will, for the first time in over a year, we will open our Sunday school hour back up. And so we'll be meeting at 930 for Sunday school, uh, for all ages we have that, and then at 1045 our regular service. And those will be the only two services that we'll have for now. And um, then we'll continue evaluating everything and, and go from there. But I want to invite you, listen, uh, come on back. Come on back into the into the service. The we'll, we'll be separated out. We'll be spaced out. We sanitize everything. We take care of all of those. Let's come and worship together. Uh, and as we can worship as one body of Christ. So I want to invite you to that. Thank you again for joining tonight. I, I noticed there's some comments on uh, the side here that says there was a problem with some audio. Um, I hope that it did not affect you. I uh, hope that that, that um, got straightened out. But um, if it did, I, I apologize. Hopefully uh, it will be fixed. But um, we want to continue to uh, worship our Lord and Savior. I want to pray with you tonight before we close. And uh, I just want you to uh, consider, are you living each day as if it could be the end of time? Because if we're not, then we're going to be caught off guard. Let's pray. Father, we do come to you tonight and thank you so much for all the blessings that you give. God, I know that your word is powerful. It's sharper than a two-edged sword, and it will never return void. God, we know that there may have been some audio issues on this uh, transmission tonight, but God, we know that's just the devil trying to keep people from hearing the word. I pray that, Father, you'll just straighten it all out. I pray that you would just touch hearts. God, that as we look at these last days and we see these false uh, gods and these false uh, prophets that are coming and the these signs that they're doing to make people believe that they are you, that God, they just want to be you and they never will be. So help us to know that we need to reach out to all of those that we know. And Father, anybody that we don't know, that we have an opportunity to reach out to, to share the, the gospel of Jesus Christ with them before it's eternally too late. God, I thank you for being able to join together, even in this way, through a streaming service, Father, but we thank you for it. And I just pray, God, that during this resurrection day upcoming, that, God, you would just be glorified in ways that we haven't even imagined. Father, we thank you, and we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, again, like I said, I'm so glad that, that um, we're able to get back together and uh, look forward to getting back with you again on next week or maybe seeing you even in person on Sunday. But for tonight, I want to say God bless and good night.